Uh, I have to get back to the office. I haven't been there all day, so. Well, can I uh, yeah, help you no. get your bags? No, thank you. I have it. Uh, what about uh, dinner? I mean, you got to eat, right? We could hop on a plane to Paris, stop at a nice, nice bistro along the Champs Elysees. Now you're offering to take me to Paris. Well, if you, if you don't want French food, we could always uh, go to Barcelona instead. I think paella is pretty good. Wow, you. You're crazy. It'd be crazy to give up on you. The thought of a wee one running around the premises is most exciting. Not that he would be running <laughs> anytime soon. Uh, not that he would necessarily be a he either. And of course, I would be most thrilled to welcome a, a she into the world. Although it might be prudent to find out the sex prior to the birth, just in case the pink room needed to be painted over. Assuming that's where the wee one would reside. But if, if proximity poses a problem, then I would happily give up my room to be the new nursery for the baby. <laughs> um, uh, sorry. Sorry. You and Jason are having a baby? I just want to be sure we have the proper security in place before Brenna shows up at Archer Pavilion. And like I said, my men will have it covered. A mob detail won't be enough to stop the Balkan. I mean, the guy's already proven he has an unlimited supply of men. You're going to need backup. Yeah, but I don't want cops anywhere near Archer Pavilion. Okay, look, I understand that you want this to be over, so do I. But if I take a step back and let you do this alone... I'm just, I'm afraid that people might get killed. Is this, is this about protecting Brenda? Or Siobhan? What, you want me to keep Brenda from walking down the aisle at her own wedding? How? Let me worry about the details. It's my neck on the line. I mean, I think I have a right to know how this is all going to work out. You do as you're instructed or your sister will pay the price. That's all you need to know. Please just leave Megan alone. She doesn't deserve to die. Neither did my son. That didn't stop Brenda Barrett from putting a bullet in his chest. Deliver results or your sister will suffer the same fate. I got lucky to tell me that the wedding was going to be in St. Timothy's. I mean, this should prove that I can deliver. Finding out the location was only the beginning. Well, what do you want me to do? Kidnap Brenda on the way to the church? You lay the groundwork. I will avenge my son. How'd you get here? Mom dropped me off at the library. I'm oh. supposed to be studying right now, but I had to come see you first. Okay, what's what's wrong? Well, I don't know if Christina told you, but I've been having these episodes. I get angry for no reason and break things. At first I thought it was because I was bipolar. Oh, like my dad? Right. Yeah. Since it runs in families, I figured if Uncle Sonny had it, there was a chance I could too. Hmm. But then I met Sean. He said it sounds more like post-traumatic stress. Who, who's Sean? Oh, he used to be a Marine in Afghanistan. Okay, well, where did you, um, where did you meet this Sean? Volunteering at the hospital? Mm -mm. I was on Baker Street when there was a car accident. It was really weird. As soon as I heard the tires start to squeal, I felt like I was right back on the bus. <sighs> that must have been pretty scary. I was afraid to move, afraid to even breathe. Thankfully, Sean came over to help, and he stayed with me until I calmed down. Okay. Well, he seems like a nice guy. After I told my mom what happened, she got me an appointment to see Christina's therapist. Mom thought it would be a good idea to talk to someone about what happened. 
Today was my first session. I was a little nervous, but talking about what we went through was surprisingly helpful. Well, that's, that's, that's great. Yeah. But when I left, all I could think about was you. How you could benefit from counseling, too. Um, I, I know that the bus crash really freaked you out, uh, Molly, but it wasn't, it wasn't as bad for me. It's probably because I'm older, and um, I've been through a lot worse stuff in my life. Like going to Pentonville, right? Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm glad, you know, talking to somebody is helping you out, but I, I don't need to shrink, I'm fine. Really? Because to me, you've been exhibiting all the signs of post-traumatic stress. You lose your temper for no reason. You get into fights at school. If you just talk to someone about what happened, I guarantee you wouldn't have so many outbursts. Talking to someone about what happened gives you an outlet for all that anger. Look, I realize not everyone is comfortable opening up to a stranger. That's why I came by. I'm here to make you feel better. So please, Michael, please tell me what happened to you in prison. Let me, let me take this. Don't need to take so what are, your, uh, what are your brothers doing tonight? Why? Well, I was thinking we'd go to Jake's, grab a drink, you'd watch them kick the crap out so of me I again. I feel sorry for you. Well, it worked the first time. Well, a lot has changed since then. Why don't you take a swing at me? It'll make you feel better. I don't want to... I don't want to hit you. How about a swift kick to the groin? I'll be talking funny for a week. It'll make you feel a hell of a lot better. The second thought, you know, those pretty serious boots, you could probably do some damage with those, and we wouldn't be able to have those eight kids we were talking about having. You should probably go with Lucky and Ethan kicking the crap out of me. Actually, they are on your side, and they think that I should give you another chance. Really? What are you waiting for? I want you to get me details on the bridal room at St. Timothy's. Number of entrances, doors, windows, types of locks, distance from the vestibule as well as the sanctuary. Be precise. Estimations are of no use. Is that where you're planning to grab her? In the parade's room when Brenda's getting dressed? Do you want your sister to die? Of course not. Then stop asking questions. It will be better for you to stop talking altogether. If you warn Lucky, not only will your sister die, but so will he. Lucky's more valuable alive than dead. Lucky's only value to me is as a conduit for information. I could easily be rid of him, dump his body in the street as a warning to others. One more word and I'll make it happen. You want to know what really concerns me, Jason? All of Sonny's family is going to be there at the wedding. And I hate to see Morgan or Molly take a bullet, just like Michael did, just because they happen to be standing in the wrong spot when a gun battle breaks I don't want to put those them. kids in danger either. I, this is not an indictment on you, okay? I, I, I understand you're doing everything you can, but the only way to keep them truly safe is to call off the wedding. Huh, that's... No, I know it sounds crazy, but by going through with it, Sonny and Brenda are basically okay, spitting if, in if the Balkan's face. you know a face, reason why the wedding shouldn't be held at Archer Pavilion, now would be a good time to tell me. Look, just think about it. If the Balkan wanted to kill Brenda, he would have done it already. It's not about that. It's about hurting her. It's about making her pay for what happened to his son. And we both know that whatever he's planning next, it's going to be big. And the wedding is the perfect place for him to pull off his revenge. That's why you and I, we need to work together to stop him. Fine. I'm sure Brenda and Sonny would appreciate the extra security. Thank you. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to spoil the surprise, or to steal Stone Cold's thunder for that matter. I was just... I was 
caught up in the joyous news. You know, for years, I, I, I've been trying to mold myself in the, the image of my master, but given my proclivity for polysyllables and significantly smaller stature, I fell short, as it were. Whereas Stone Cold's progeny would, would no doubt inherit a multitude of genetic gifts, making the wee ones strong and most assuredly silent, which would be helpful for you in those early morning hours when baby... Ah, oh, please, please, you, you need to stop, please. Thank you so much, but... You can't do this. I, I am not having kids. I won't ever have children. I can't get pregnant. Oh. I'm, no, I'm, I'm aware of your condition, but... Significant advancements have been made in the field, and that procedure... I'm not having the procedure. So you don't wish to be a mother? No, oh, just because a woman is capable of having children doesn't mean that she should. True, but... You have nothing to fear. You are... Kind and, and, and gentle, and you wouldn't be raising the kid on your own. I, I have witnessed with my own eyes how uh, caring of a father figure Stone Cold has been to, to, to Michael, and I'm sure he would step up for his own. Yeah, project. I'm sure he would. I'm sure Jason would be an amazing father, and guess what? I'm sure I would probably be a pretty good mom too, but our lives are just a little bit too dangerous to bring kids into this world. Well, even if Stone Cold had never started working for Mr. Sir, that's no guarantee that his kids would be safe. Tra tragedy can strike any to anyone, regardless of occupation. Spinelli, why are you pushing this? A woman doesn't need to have a child to feel complete. I mean, right, Brenda? You obviously chose not to have kids because it wasn't right for you. It, it's, it's the same. I'm, I'm choosing not to because it's just, it's not right for me either. I didn't really have a choice, so. But Molly, it, it was nice of you to stop by, and I appreciate you trying to help, really, but, but you just need to focus on your own recovery right now. Well, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Counseling made me feel so much better, and I think it can make you feel better, too. But it took a lot of courage for you to open up and talk about what happened, and how afraid you were after the bus crash, how hopeless we all felt, really. But look, even if you think you, you're feeling better, there's still a long way to go. So that's why you have to keep seeing your therapist. I know. And I just wish you had someone to help you, too. I did. And even though I, I don't see her anymore, she, she helped me out a lot. You're talking about Abby, aren't you? Uh, I can see how she'd be really easy to talk to. Remember that day at Kelly's? Abby was so nice to me. I liked her right away. Yeah. Christina did. Well, that's because Christina wants you to be with one of her friends. Well, you don't? Not if you don't. I mean, Christina's friends are nice, but they get hung up on the dumbest things, like who's taking who to the dance, which class is going to win the spirit stick at pep rally. It's so high school, and you're so not. Maybe it's because of everything you've had to go through. It made you more grown up than other kids your age. But that's why Abby was so perfect for you. She was mature. That's what everyone was so weirded out about. They thought she was too old for me. Michael, don't let the conventions of small-minded pedants stifle the feeling you and Abby have for each other. If you love Abby, you should be with her. 